Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. I am here today with a special guest. I'm very excited to announce Tim Story. Tim Story is an acclaimed author, speaker, and life coach, well known for inspiring and motivating people of all walks of life, from entertainment executives, celebrities, and athletes to adults and children. That's enough. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he doesn't want to hear about himself. <laughs> you guys can read about it later. <laughs> okay. All right. We will dive in. <laughs> How is it out there in sunny Southern California? <laughs> it is so nice. You know, it's, it's actually been 90 degrees, which is so hot. So uh, the weather's good. Um, I live in Orange County, which has a nice way about it. There's a nice breeze. And went to the gym this morning, uh, talking to you right now. We'll do some fun things today, but I love Southern California. Yeah, you, you're in my favorite place, the gym. I love <laughs> working out. Talk to me a little bit about why you work out first thing in the morning and what does it do for you? Well, number one, I'm over 50 now, so that's kind of weird. Uh, so, you know, when I started, I was the, the, the young kid. I was, you know, 20, traveling the world, doing all these things. It just felt like unlimited energy. And I've always been an athlete. I've always worked out to uh, a certain extent. But it's wild, like in my, in my 40s, going into my late 40s, I started to realize like, oh my gosh, I'm waking up and my body aches or I'm waking up and I'm more tired than I used to be. So now I just make it a discipline and I'm in the gym five or six days a week and um, it helps my life. So do Got you it. think that um, this correlates to spiritual health being healthy in the mind and body? Yeah, I think similar to you, uh, and I'm writing this down, that we need to prosper physically, mentally, socially, financially, right? Family. And uh, it's all part of it. It's, it's uh, balanced success in every area of our lives. So there's no doubt about it that the, the physical and the spiritual go together. But also people need a social life. Like, I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of jobs, but I have a lot of fun. Like, I'm going to go see Justin Timberlake when he comes in town. Um, I love comedians. For New Year's Eve, I went and saw uh, Dave Chappelle, and he was out of this world with John Mayer. So I have a social life. Got to have balance. Well, I was just in California, and I decided to rent the convertible this time and i rode with the top down the hair blowing everywhere and went to you know i i socialized with my fitness friends and had some time off and there's just something about that freedom feeling of just having that day off with the wind blowing through your hair and the sunshine that just renews your spirit i believe and it just brings you i think you've got to have that time off so that you can be fired up. <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and I think that it is it is a real balance. And um, I call it like the holy ground versus the battleground. The battleground is life. Like life is busy. Um, people have to do things they don't usually want to do, like chores. Maybe go grocery shopping or go to the DMV or, you know, just life. So that, that's kind of like your battleground. And sometimes even your job for some of you watching is your battleground because you kind of like your job, but you don't love your job. So you got to go back to the holy ground. The holy ground is really that place of meditation, that place of peace, that place of serenity. You have to have your holy ground before you have your battleground. And in order to be successful on the battleground, you got to be very strong from the holy ground. Yeah. And I, I believe that, like, I believe that 100% because you just, if you're just going all the time, you get burnt out and you don't have anything in your cup to be able to give to others. 
And uh, I was just so impressed when I was watching you on the stage at the Summit of Greatness with your message and how fired up you are about children. You were talking about how you started into the business. Can you give people a background on how you got started into the business and became this preacher to the stars? Yeah, I think one of the things is that um, from growing up uh, lower income, um, raised in the Los Angeles area, I was raised, uh, born in Compton, California, that we, we didn't really have a lot. I always say we were lower income, but never lower class. We, we didn't have a lot, and we really hustled. Like my mother really taught us not to do a halfway job. And the cool thing about my life is that as I progressed, I had mentors along the way that cared about me. My sixth grade teacher, Mr. Probert, he told me really positive things about myself. He thought I was smart. He said I was smart. My little league coach, he was behind me. Other people were there for me. And I said to myself that when I get older, I'm going to do that same for other people. So as I began to find success at an early age, starting at 20, I started already giving back, going into inner cities literally all over the world. I've been now to 75 countries of the world, going into the toughest areas, speaking life in the children's dreams. I love doing it. I love that. Yeah. And that just led to other things. And you have, you know, you were on Oprah's Soul, Soul Sunday. I was listening to, I really liked what you had to say about not becoming a discount version of yourself. Yeah. And can you give the audience a little rundown on what does that mean to not be a discount version of yourself? Yeah, I mean, I told, I told Oprah, who is a great friend of mine, and we do several projects together. It was nice that she put me on again on Easter, this last Easter, just a couple of weeks ago, that um, I believe that every one of us has been spoken over. Uh, from the God side, I believe that God spoke over your life, over my life. And the way we feel his voice and hear his voice many times is through desire. So I desired as a young person to do something big. And, but I believe that I was simply listening to the spoken words over my life. And it's like Walt Disney uh, back in the 30s, he walked into an amusement park and he said, I want to do my own amusement park, but I'm going to do it different, I'm going to do it better, and I'm going to do it more magical. That's so powerful. I don't think that thought just came to his mind. I believe he was spoken over. So we have to really hear that voice that's really coming to us in our spirit, I believe, from God, and then rise up to it and not be ashamed. And uh, don't be a discount version of yourself. And uh, it's been said, you know, you've been born an original, don't buy a copy. So I have fun, you know, I'm in the movie business, I'm doing plays, I've got three TV shows uh, coming out, you know, I've got a lot of businesses that we do, but look, I'm having fun with you. Yeah, <laughs> you're a real person. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So not becoming a discount version of ourselves. You know, there's going to be, we're on our mission, let's say, that we have heard this voice deep within our soul, our spirit, our heart, and we can't ignore it because it's constant. And we're following that. We're going along our path. We're trying to follow our vision. Then we have obstacles and people per se that yeah. are coming against us well, who are you to do that? Well, who yeah. do you think you are? And, or in some way they're trying to tear us down right. and we may get discouraged. What are, what are some tools to help us get through this? Because I know that it's going to happen no matter what, when you're going for your dreams. Okay. Awesome. Awesome question. So what happens is that everybody that's watching right now, you have a promise. Like there are things that life has called you to do assignments. Okay. I call them God ideas, not good ideas. So you have a promise. And then you have to find your principles. And then, you know, that's what you're teaching. You're teaching principles to better health, principles to better mindset, right? 
uh, principles to have a brave life. So that's a lot of what you're about. So you have your promise and you have your principles. So all of you are living by some form of principles, whether it be this is what my grandmother said or this is what my mother said. You are living by some principles. So you have the promise, the principles. Now, those principles better be good because the principles will give you the fuel to get to what I call the problem stage. Because you're gonna have the promise, the principles, there will always be problems. Always be problems, people. If you decide to lose weight and you start running, they will build a Krispy Kreme across the street from your house. With a hot pot. <laughs> of course. Yes, yeah, so the problems are gonna always come. And I think you're gonna like what I'm about to say. I call it bugs on the windshield. If you drive in July, even in Cincinnati, and you're driving from Cincinnati to Cleveland, you are going to have bugs that hit your windshield because it's bug season. Bugs on the windshield. In life, there will always be problems. People say, pray that I don't have any problems. Well, you're asking me to pray that you die. Because <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're alive, there's going to be bugs in the windshield. But your principles will help you get through the problems. Uh, I was speaking yesterday at a Paul Mitchell school in Las Vegas, and one of the students said, Do you, you know, what are your biggest fears? I said, I don't have any. She goes, no, no, what are your biggest fears? I said, I don't have any. <laughs> I'm really not joking. I fear nothing. I love that. I I'm getting nothing. there. I'm, I'm getting afraid. there. <laughs> because my principles are so doggone strong, and my faith is in God, what am I going to fear? I love that. I don't that. fear death. I don't, I don't fear man. I don't fear, I don't fear anything. I love that. He holds the keys to fear. What? He holds the keys to death, right? So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And it kind of just reminds me of this weekend. I was competing at the WBFF in L.A., and it was my first go around with that organization and crazy things happened. I had a wardrobe malfunction backstage. And, but before I had went, I had this song going through my mind by Steve Winwood, roll with it, baby. Yeah. And I kind of thought about it and I was like, you know, every competition, it isn't the way you think it's going to be. It isn't yeah. all perfect. It isn't like a bed of roses, crazy things happen. So I'm going to roll with the punches. I'm going to roll with whatever happens. Love it. And then I came out on top because I didn't let it stress me out. And, you know, so I just kind of think knowing like when you are on a diet, you might feel like you're never going to crave chocolate again, but I guarantee you, you are, you are going to crave it. Yeah. And so just having these tools and these strategies to help us knowing we will face obstacles. It's a definite guarantee no doubt about it and just so i can ask you this question because i don't know when you said you came out on top did you do well in the competition yeah i placed in the top five i did well that's a big deal yeah okay so but to me even if you've placed in the right top there. 20 that still would have been great it because would. you did your best yeah, and I yeah. think that that's where we miss it is that there's so much teaching out there where everybody is just trying to like be on their grind and be better than the next guy and leave their enemies in the dust. I don't think anything that way. I want my assignment. That's why when you ask me on this podcast, what a privilege. Hello. Hi. Do great. And if you run circles around me three times, congratulations. You know, like, <laughs> I do pretty doggone good with my book sales. <laughs> but, but Brene Brown is kicking my butt right now. But I love <laughs> Brene Brown. I promote her books. That's, that's Brene Brown's time, what she's doing, right? Yes. Let's do our thing, let's do the best we can, and let's be behind other people. And we have to have, we all have gifts and we all have something to share. And your shining your light does not diminish my light. And so this is something I think that through competing, I, I've learned because you can't always walk away with something, but you do walk away with something. 
it's just not it's the trophy is not the most important part at all it was the journey and it was pushing myself towards the goal and um and i just I, i just have to say the feeling of accomplishment is priceless to me so let me ask you a question, being that I ask questions for a living too. <laughs> How is your life going? How are you finding balance in your life? Uh, well, I try to focus on what's at hand and the most important at the time. And I, I have a, a whole, I, I did a whole uh, vision board this year and I put my main goals and then my goals that support my goals. So I prioritize I prioritize my goals, and if something isn't in alignment with what I'm wanting to achieve, then that has to go. Yes. Okay, so for for your company, to people that are getting to know you from my side, okay, tell us what you do, because I want to promote what you're doing to our people. Okay. Tell us what you do. I got you. Okay, so uh, I own a studio called the Chip Fit Studio, and I built it about four years ago. And what it's all about is helping women to love themselves from the inside out when they look in the mirror, which means it's all encompassing, building self-esteem, confidence, so they can be empowered to live in relationships and the life that they want and deserve. Okay. And then I have a podcast and a book called The Sisterhood of Sweat. Can I see it? This is the book. Yeah. Strong women empowering, achieving together. Because we can always do more together than alone. Wow. And what was one of the pivotal things in your journey that just kicked you into this space where you said, this is what I want to do. I want to help people. Well, I... um when I'll just put it out there when I was eight uh I was uh sexually molested by a close family member and I don't believe I really started healing from that until recently because Mm -hmm. I kept it a secret and I carried that shame and guilt but now I've released that so I'm empowered also that led me into domestic violence I believe because I didn't understand clear boundaries and all of that Um, so I left that situation behind with two children. And so after going through all of that, I wanted to help other women that may be suffering from a low self-esteem or they may be beat down by something and they just need that hand up, you know, to help them to have that confidence, to know they are worth more and that they can do more and that they don't have to live like that. That, That's that's wonderful of of turning the the mess into a message right yeah because you know it's so terrible what happened to you and in so many people's lives it cripples them right right and just stops them right there yeah but you have decided to you know use that pain and help people out which i i know you're getting great stories back right oh lives that are just being changed oh and you know it was kind of weird the first time actually the person that i first heard speak about their childhood where they were victimized was lewis Howes. i was listening to him on not even his own podcast and it really that changed my life just in that moment that's why i believe podcasting is so powerful and just coming out with my story it was just and it was hard And I had a vulnerability hangover, I have to say. But then right away, it was within a day, somebody came to me and that that had a child going through that and I was able to help them and more and more people. And so you connect, you know, some, yes, your, your mess, your mess can become your message and you don't have to live in that. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, two key words is that you can go through recovery and discovery at the same time. And recovery is things we've been through in the past and things we're going through now. But if you're not careful, you'll stay in the recovery zone and you'll miss your discovery zone. And so I think some people should not tell so much of their story. I know some people that that's all they tell is their story. Yeah. And it almost paralyzes them in their past. And they, they, they get stuck in that recovery zone 
and they don't realize that by the grace of God, that things were healed, things were mended, and there's a time and place to tell the story, but you don't want to miss your discovery zone. Right. And that's what's next and what's new. Right. That's the beautiful thing about life. You never know what is next and what's new. Like, I may turn on the TV in six months and see that you have your own TV show. <laughs> that you are just doing, like, amazing. And I could say, oh, my God, I talked to her before the TV show. So that is the story of my life by being the life coach to entertainers since the early 90s. I see people before they make it that just explode. I remember one time sitting in a coffee shop with Justin Timberlake, and he was in in sync. And he said to me, Mr. Story, I'm thinking about doing these various things. I'm thinking about doing a clothing line. I'm thinking about doing a restaurant. I'm thinking about acting. Hello, the guy becomes Justin Timberlake. But that was before the fact. Right? Right. And Recovery, I, discovery. I just don't, like, when I was going through it, I went and to a, a actually do fitness for a women's shelter. And I listened to them talk. And they were sitting around talking in a circle. And you find out how long ago some of this stuff happens. And so I just knew within my heart that I was leaving this behind. I didn't yeah. want to live in my story. Yeah. So that I agree with 100% is you ha this happened to you, but it doesn't have to define you. Yes. Ask me some hard questions. Okay. <laughs> what are ways people can keep from getting stuck in an almost life? Like they almost made it. They almost did it. You are prepared for me today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Three levels of living. Almost most. Not most. Almost means not quite. I almost lost the weight. I was almost happy. I almost went to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> most means there's a ceiling. In this house, there's high ceilings. Okay. If I was to let go a healing balloon, it would go, 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 and finally it would stop, okay? Most is your ceiling. Some of you, your ceilings are too doggone low. Your ex put a ceiling on you, you put a ceiling on you, your family put a ceiling on you. I got no ceilings, no way. See, I don't wanna be almost, I don't wanna be most with the ceiling. I wanna be utmost. An utmost God did not create almost children. Ooh, I just love that. So you need to cooperate with your utmost calling. How's that going to happen? You have to become the right person. That's what you're teaching. With the right plan, that's what you're teaching. But you have to have the right partners. Partner with people who believe in your utmost life. I do have a posse. I'm not going to lie. If you see me <laughs> rolling somewhere, you're going to see me run, rolling five deep, seven deep, nine deep. I think the biggest posse, bigger than mine, is Snoop Dogg, and they all smell like they just came out of a spot. <laughs> but, anyway, but I do run with a posse because I love mentoring people. I love putting out the energy, getting it back. Putting out the energy, getting it back. Get around people that can partner with you and help take you to that next place. How do you decipher who those people are? Not difficult. Okay. Not difficult. Let's say you've got barnacles. Cause I listened to your whole thing about the barnacles on the boat, pulling you down yeah. and not US, sending you up. The Navy, the U S Navy spends millions of dollars every year taking barnacles off the bottom of the ship. Hey, Joseph, can you answer the front door? <laughs> Our photographer just showed up. Okay. Okay, so the U.S. Navy takes barnacles out the bottom of the ship, spends millions of dollars. Because as you heard, the ship can be going forward. The barnacles will pull it down. It'll, it'll, it'll make it lag or go left or go get right. You've got to cut some barnacles off your ship. How do I know who my barnacles are, Tim Story? Simple. What are their motives? What is the mindset? What are their motives? What is their mindset? Ooh, I never thought of it motives that way. Mindset. Come on, this is why I'm Tim Story. Come on. 
Motives and mindset. Dude, I'm going to know your motives and mindset by being around you for one day. Oh, you my God. Why? I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> out of the abundance of your mouth, you're going to speak. Okay. So it's, it's coming something. from the mouth. It's going to come out. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they, can't, they can't help themselves. They're going to talk. Like some people, they'll say, oh, my God, Tim's story. I just want to be around you. I just want to learn from you. No, 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 no. They want to be around me, but they want something from me. Okay. They'll be around maybe for an hour, and they're like, oh, my God, this is cool. We're at the NBC studios. You're doing the Steve Harvey show, Facebook Live every Monday. This is fun to be around. But then they're going to start asking for things. Can you help me with this? Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Come on. Motives. What are your motives, Russ? Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Wow. Wow, that's telling. I, I, I think I never really thought of it that way, but now you've given me a whole new... I'm dropping bombs, girl. You are. I love it. I'm playing around. And that's what I was hoping for. You so you're delivering. Play, you play around. Bam. <laughs> okay. Now, my next question for you is about comeback. Not A comeback not being a go-back. But how do we overcome our setbacks? That's a little complicated, but. It's not to... complicated <laughs> in my life. Okay, let me get a picture. One second. <laughs> I'm leaving the screen. Okay, so I'm getting the picture. So this is 1999. I love keeping this picture. That's me and Robert Downey Jr. Okay. Wow, look at you. Look at me now. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, but I'm just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Robert are friends. We do projects together. So Robert Downey Jr. in 1999 was in a setback. He was on the cover of Newsweek magazine. Like his life is in trouble. Okay. He was struggling with addiction, right? Yes. That was a setback. Set means to fix, to lock, to solidify. So you're set. Set back behind, like all crap. Divorce could be a set back. Financial problem, set back. Okay? Yes. Lose your job, set back. Addiction, set back. Now, what most people want to do is they want to sit in their setback. Sit. And yeah. usually they don't blame it on themselves. It's somebody else's fault. This is why this happened. Okay. Someone else did it They're to They're looking me. for someone to blame automatically. So they sit. So I want you to say this to me. Say, don't sit. Don't sit. Okay. All right. And then say, don't settle. Don't settle. Okay. Settle is that, you know, my life could have been great. But I was on the cover of Newsweek magazine, and they said that I'm not very good. Okay? It's 1999. Oh, what do they know? Okay. Fast forward <laughs> to 2018. Robert Downey Jr. has done over 15 Marvel movies now. He's making about $60 million a year. When one of the biggest agents in Beverly Hills said to me, Tim, I know you're helping Robert. You should just stop. Because he's done. That's what he told me in the year 2000. It's you're never done until you're done. You're not done. Don't sit. Don't settle. Don't cement yourself in your setback. All right, Tim, how do I get up? So powerful. Isn't this good? Here's what I believe. A God idea comeback, because I want a God idea comeback, not a good idea comeback, is three things. It's God breathe. When God's breath comes into you, that can happen through praying, meditation, studying his Bible, but it can also happen through a conversation. One conversation can change your life. Do you realize that people's lives are being changed right now? Yes, because I mean, mine was changed originally. <laughs> Watch my dog on videos. You know, I did a video yesterday 
and we had close to 218,000 views on it. Just me talking about making choices in life. We did one a couple of days before. We had about 230,000 views on it. Why are so many people hearing and listening to my words? Because I'm dropping bombs. I'm telling you. They're hungry you for don't the truth. You have to sit in your crap. Wake up. Jump up. Get up. Don't sit. Don't settle. Don't cement yourself. Get ready for your comeback. Boom. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. Still Good early. Stuff. I got goosebumps when you it's talked about early. God I'm coming down. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. This is powerful stuff today. How do we know when we set goals? Okay, let's say we, we're getting at it. We got our vision boards. We're going. We're grinding. And all, we're off track. It's not we set the we didn't set the right goal. It wasn't. The heart felt it wasn't, you know, just a goal that we set because we think we should. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to give you this good stuff now. Some things in life you decide. Some things you discover. The vision board is my decision. Okay, oh, my God, I feel inspired. This is what I want. Watch. I'm acting. I'm from Hollywood. I want a Ferrari. Watch. I want to live in Beverly Hills. <laughs> okay, watch. watch. I want to date David Beckham. Can't. He's married. So they go through all these things. Yes, yeah, she might object. <laughs> so that's, that's your decision. I do believe you should have a vision board to write what you think might happen. But get ready to be open to an audible. Well, what's an audible? In the game of football, the quarterback many times calls audibles. He sees the way the defense lines up, and he goes, ooh, I was going to pass over there, but now they got too many defenders. So you'll hear him. Like, you'll hear Peyton Manning. That's what he was famous for. He'd be going, Omaha, Omaha. He's calling an audible. How powerful is this? Some of you watching today, wake up. Call an audible. There's too many defenders over there. <laughs> you were going to go that way. Go this way. <laughs> so something oh, my gosh, up. right? Go some where nobody is. <laughs> right. Some things you decide, some things you discover. Like, I'm calling audibles left and right. I didn't know I was going to be doing Broadway plays. I didn't know I'd be doing movies with famous people. I knew I'd be in the entertainment business, but I'm, I'm calling audibles left and right. Heck yes. Well, in order to do that, don't you have to d disconnect from public opinion and people's opinions about what you should be doing or just what they think of you? Okay, you have to, you have to disconnect from some people's opinions. Okay, whose opinions should we listen to? We need to, we need to listen to people's opinions who have similar mindset again motives again and people that we look at their life and say wow that's a good example right yeah okay. so what is what is your testimony what have you manifested show me your goods so if i go into my friend michael mina's restaurant i know i'm going to get good food because he's a proven chef Right? Yes. And so if I go into my friend Gordon Elliott's restaurant that I'm doing a new show with, Gordon Elliott, I'm doing a cooking show, believe it or not. Oh, that's awesome. He's the guy that does the chew. Uh, then I know I'm going to get good food because he is known for manifesting good food. Get around people that have manifested things that are good. Isn't that powerful? Yes. You better watch where you hear your advice from. But I need advice. Uh, the Bible says there's wisdom in the multitude of counselors. So I have people in my inner circle, and I say, hey, I'm thinking of doing this. They go, ah, oh, man, you already got three TV shows. You're going to do a fourth? Uh, yeah, maybe I can't do that till 2020. Or I'm thinking about doing this. Or, oh, my God, these people have asked me to do this. 
Ah, it sounds good, but Tim, you're a little bit busy. Yeah, I definitely have people that speak in my life that are manifestors and they have good motives. Okay, so do listen to opinion, but consider whose opinion it is. Consider the source. Consider the source. Yes. Wow, that is awesome. Let's see, what do we have? Oh, okay, so you spoke a lot recently. I was, I've, I've been listening to all of your messages so that I could deliver a good, something that I felt was reflective of you today. And so, you're on 10 right now. You're on fire. <laughs> you're doing so good. People but, like you. Oh, um, you're sweet. You know, you're, you're more than beautiful uh, on the exterior. You care. At the Lewis House event, people cheered for you. People like you. Well, people like you. I like people. You're a cool person. Thank you. So supernaturally, because, you know, like sometimes we have these ideas and we're going on our own steam. But when it becomes supernatural, then it's just beyond anything you could expect or ever dream. How do we get into, how do we get into that space? What, what do we, what, how do we prepare ourselves for that space? Because it's also a little overwhelming. You're talking my language. Okay, here's, here's what happens. I'm in Nigeria, and I see a guy, and he's cutting his lawn. He had a big front yard. I mean, massive. And he's cutting it with a machete. Look, a machete. You know what a machete is? Like a long knife? Yes. I'm like, man, we were poor, and at least we had a lawnmower. <laughs> So I started studying. You're going to just crack up because I study everything. If I don't know about it, my butt will know probably by midnight because I love to study. I want to figure it out. So I found out different types of lawnmowers. So you have the regular one, the push mower. You have the gas mower, the electric mower. You have the John Deere type of tractor mower where you can get on like, I'm doing my grass, okay? <laughs> Guess what they got now? The robot mower. <laughs> I have a robot vacuum cleaner and I love it. <laughs> no, you don't. Roby, we named it. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, and it's awesome. It's the best thing I ever purchased. How do you do it? You just sit back and control I just it? push the button and it goes, it picks, you just have to clear any cords that might be in the way, but it goes everywhere. Oh it cleans gosh. the entire house it's awesome you are so the jetsons you you personally have become the jetsons okay so here's the deal some people are trying to solve big problems with a machete some are trying to solve big problems with a push mower and that's good get on your doggone john deere tractor and work through your problems I tap into God's supernatural strength. His super on my natural makes me unstoppable. I, I promise you it works. How do you do it? For me, I pray. I study God's word. I talk to positive people like yourself, right? I take walks. I'm out with nature. I'm in spiritual situations. I get empowered. God will enable your unables. Wherever you are unable, he will enable your unable and make you able. Yeah, I love that because you were, you were speaking in one of your messages about the fact that he uses people a lot of times to bring a message that are, you know, you're not fully ready. You're, you're kind of sometimes a mess, but he, he uses you. Man, and, uh, that's so true. I call it God uses shaky people to do sturdy projects. Yeah. Like you're going to love this. I did a, I did a poll with super successful people. Cause you know, the type of people that I life coach, they're the top of the top all over the world, not just in Valencia, California all over the world, the top people, artists, designers, rappers, writers, smart people. And I said to them, 
to 20 people. When you were on top, did you ever feel like your life was kind of out of sorts? And they said, oh my gosh, yes. And I said, did you almost feel like you were like living a lie? Not so much living a lie. I just knew that I sucked in certain areas, but yet my life was still going okay. You know what that is? That's mercy. See, mercy and grace fills in the gaps. I don't have it all together. There are a lot of people that think I'm doing pretty well, but I'm still working through some things. There are still, there's at least probably two people on the planet who still irritate me. <laughs> I don't do it on purpose. I can't even name them right now. Of course not. There's just some irritating people out there. I'm trying to get to the point where no one irritates me, but I'm probably down to two out of the <laughs> million on the planet. <laughs> oh my goodness. So God is our refuge when we are in trouble or when we need peace. And how do we seek that refuge out? You know, how do we get in that place where we're taking refuge, you know, because I know you talk about it a lot, but I, and I know a lot of us feel like we need a refuge from, you know, the people that are attacking us, that are lying about us, that come against yeah. us. How do we get in that perfect place of refuge with God? Okay. It's very simple. I said it earlier. You stop, you look, and you listen. My sheep, they know my voice, he says. In another voice, they don't have to follow. So we have become a nation of human doings. We're moving, 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 moving. Texting, 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 doing this, moving, moving. Stop. Turn the radio off. If you're in traffic, have a God moment. If you're not used to praying, try it. It could be things like, God, I'm struggling. Tim Story said, I can have strength. Will you give me strength? Stop, look to him, and then listen to his voice. He will speak to you. How does he speak? Sometimes he speaks by speaking to your spirit. Sometimes he speaks through circumstances. He speaks through the written word. Like I like this book that I have over here called Jesus Calling. Get that book. It's like a devotional. It's called Jesus Calling. You can read these devotionals every single day. Get my book, Come Back and Beyond. There's a lot of scripture in there, turning your setbacks to comebacks. So stop, look, and listen. Bam. Yeah. So, so when I'm listening, is it possible I'm going to hear an audible voice? Not too common. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think I do, Tim Story. <laughs> because you're special. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So I am, I am special. I hear you. Are we are all I've special. Never, I've never heard one, but you might be getting that. <laughs> I, I didn't sign up for that package. <laughs> you didn't sign up for that package. <laughs> oh my gosh. My, well, my, my package deal is kind of like, what? Are you sure? Uh, is that well, you? <laughs> well, don't we recognize? Well, couldn't it be that if you listen to his voice often enough, you recognize it? One hundred percent. It's like when I was a kid, and my mother said, "Timmy, come in." Like I was out playing with the other kids, and I'm like nine, right? I didn't say, "Who's that, Mrs. Smith?" I know my mother's voice. So same with God. My sheep know my voice. So the closer you are to God, the more you begin to know his voice. But I do know people that feel like they have heard the audible voice. I just have not. Maybe he thinks that will scare me too much. Maybe that will be the first thing that I'm afraid of. <laughs> what, what would you like to say to somebody out there that maybe is listening? This is perking their interest. They're not religious at all. Maybe they don't even know if they believe there's a God. Yeah. What would you like to say to them today? I would say I don't blame you because I think that 
like so many of the representatives for God, like really? Like if I was God, I probably would have chosen some different guys. <laughs> so I think a lot of the representatives are like, really? And so I don't blame you. Uh, I have a church called the Congregation. We meet every Sunday. I am the senior pastor, which means I am the senior servant. We have a great staff. It's a very amazing church, a growing church. Uh, we have over 500 people part of the church in only just over two years. We grow organically. We don't do a lot of big advertising. And people come from as far as two hours away. And I think one of the reasons that they're coming is that they're looking for God without all the silliness. So I think that people have been looking for God without all the trappings. We have people from the Muslim faith, from Buddhist faith, from all faiths that come to our church. And I am a Christian and I teach Christian principles. But some of the people from other faiths are saying, man, you're so like non-judgmental. You're just loving, you're just caring. So if I was you and you are seeking to get to know more about God, start talking to him. To say, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. God, if you really have a plan for me, show me the plan. Start at the elementary level and then watch you and watch me and we'll keep helping you. I love that because I just think that you've got, he's, he, God will meet you where you're at and hang on, somebody. God will meet you where you're at. So it doesn't have to be in a church. It doesn't have to be, you know, what you may envision or have envisioned in the past. Oh, it does not have to be in a church. It could be in the gym. It could be at a sporting event. It could be in so many different places. A lot of my God encounters are in the back of like an Uber. Uh, like a guy will look at the rear view mirror and go like, hey, you look familiar. Are you Smokey Robinson? I go, no. Uh, are you so-and-so? And then they kind of figure out finally who I am. And we'll dialogue about life. And so many of the Uber guys have said, oh, my God, this is such a setup. I'm having like a God moment. And so, yeah. God cares that much. He'll set up God moments for you. What, what is like one of your success stories that you could tell the audience today where somebody just transformed like right before your eyes? It was like a God moment that you're helping them because you help thousands of people. I think one of the coolest stories is that I was on a uh, airplane and I was coming from Las Vegas and this really good looking guy was on the plane. And his two friends were super good looking. They looked like, like male models. And it was early in the morning, and you could tell they had stayed up all night. You could literally smell the alcohol coming out of their pores. And I'm telling you, there were empty seats everywhere. And this real good looking kid, probably mid 20s, sits next to me, and he goes, Hey, how you doing? So I go, How you doing? And so he just keeps staring at me and talking a little bit. He goes, oh, I had the craziest night. And he went through the debauchery of the night before. We went here, then we got crazy, then we went here, then we went crazy, then we went here, we went crazy. And he just kept staring at me. And he goes, dude, what's your name? I go, Tim Story. He goes, oh my God. I go, what? He goes, you are on my refrigerator. I said, what do you mean? He goes, <laughs> you're coming to do a big seminar at my church. And he said, and my mother put your picture on my refrigerator. He says, I'm confessing all my sins to you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was such a funny thing because he felt so embarrassed. I go, dude, you're young. You're working through things. You know that I kept contact with that guy and he really, just realized that that was like a aha moment for him like to really cool it on the way he was living because he was like living over the top yeah I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a a good time in moderation yeah but he was living over the top all the time yeah to me that's a cool story yeah my eyes started to sting <laughs> that's a real encounter man 
Yeah. I love I, that. Yes. Cause it changed him. Yeah. And you see a lot of people's lives change, but they have to be willing and they have to be ready for that change. Yeah, they do. They do. And uh, I think part of it is you got to have the desire, but you have to have the disciplines. The desire is one thing, the discipline is another. So that's very, very important. So I have about two more minutes. Okay. Because I have got to jump on. I am doing a program in seven minutes, and we have to prepare for it. We have a whole team here right now. So I want to say to you, what a privilege to be on your program. Can you show us your book again? Sure. And how can they get it? can get it on Amazon.com, The Sisterhood of Sweat. And the arms that came with the book, how do they get those? Those arms? <laughs> you, uh, you follow what I have in the book, and it'll lead you there. And I also have an online course that's getting ready to launch with a free challenge next week. I love go, it. Go to chickfit.me. I'm proud of you. You're down to earth. You're getting it done. I'm telling you, at the Lewis House event, they were all cheering for you. They were going I was, wild. I was nervous as heck to stand up in that crowd, but it was worth it. They were going wild. So, so Michael, you, well, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say, I, I'm, I'm proud of you and just keep doing what you're doing. Well, I appreciate that so much. And I appreciate so much that you came on and you took your time. I just want to acknowledge you so much for just being authentic and real in a space where you could be completely full of yourself and you could be fake. So, I mean, I just want to say that that speaks to me. That's why I wanted to interview you so bad that I went to extraordinary links <laughs> yeah. just to ha just to be able to talk to you and learn from you. And I have learned so much today. What are three simple truths you could leave with our listeners today? Okay. Truth number one, is God, God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the same. That's truth number one. God loves you. Hey, you guys, David Sams is at the door. David Sams. Hi, David. <laughs> Help produce Jeopardy, Will of Fortune, and the Oprah Winfrey Show is showing up at my door. That's right. pretty darn cool. What kind of house am I running? Roachers <laughs> are all over the doggone place. The truth number one is God loves you the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the same, okay? Number two, while you're feeling the sting of your setback, God is preparing your comeback. Please don't put yourself down, okay? And step number three, truth number three, okay? You're going to be okay. God did not bring you this far to leave you. He did not teach you to swim to let you drown. You're gonna be okay. Bam! And I love it. Love you. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode with Tim Story, The Sisterhood of Sweat. Give it some love. Review it in iTunes. Speak back on the Facebook page and let Tim know how much you enjoyed him today. Thanks, everybody. This concludes the episode of the Sisterhood of Sweat.